Hello everyone, this video walks you through two beginning examples of figured base. So there are two ways to realize a figured base problem, or realize or complete. Um, and the first way is to go about it um, by looking at the baseline and the inversion symbols, and then immediately figuring out the Roman numerals, um, and then just completing as if it were a normal corral harmonization. The second way is to look at the baseline of the inversion symbols and just figure out what chord it is in terms of letter names. Um, and then after filling in all the chords, um, put in the Roman numerals after doing an analysis. So it's good to be uh, able to do both. So for example one, we're going to immediately find the Roman numerals. And for example two, we're going to wait to find the Roman numerals. So in example one, we're in G major. Um, and we start on a G major chord. Um, uh, we start on a G major chord because there's a G, B, and a D in it. Um, and we're in G, and so uh, that just makes the G major triad. Now, in order to put down Roman numerals, I'm just going to go to text to get Roman numerals. So since we're in G major, it's a G major chord. This is a 1. And then we come across a 6 in the inversion symbols. Um, so a 6 means that it's in first inversion. So if it's in first inversion, that means that the third is in the base. Now if the third is in the base, that means that E is the third of the chord. So to find the root of that chord, um, we just need to go a third lower. So a third lower, a generic third lower than E, is a C. So that means that this is a C chord, um, and since C is the fourth scale degree of G major, that means that this is a four chord, except it's a four, uh, four six, because it's in first inversion. Next we come across a six four, um, which means that second inversion. Now, since it's second inversion, that means that the fifth is in the base, and since the fifth is in the base, that means that D is the fifth. So what chord has D as a fifth? Well, if we go a fifth lower, we can find that out, and it turns out to be G. So that means it's a one chord, because that's the root of the chord. So if, um, so then it's one, then you just put six, four, um, because, you know, that's the inversion that's given to us. Next, we come up with a seven, um, and... Um, that means that it's a seven chord in uh, root position. So, what chord has a root of D? Well, a D major chord does. However, it's a seven, so it's a D dominant seven in this case. Um, since D is the fifth scale degree in G major, that means it's a five chord. And again, since it's seven, so we put the seven. Now, five is um, a somewhat unusual one to see to a certain degree, because normally you'll see five, three. But 5 is another way of just saying it's a new position. Um, so that means that, again, it's a 1 because G is the root and we're in G major. Uh, just to note on the notation of this, this is a uh, messy way of notating it. The 4 should go up here. I'm just not sure how to do that with the software. Um, anyway, now that we have the Roman numerals, um, we can start filling in the other voices. But first, let's start by making a melody. So the next chord again is a, is a four chord, which means that it's a C major chord. So then you c that means that it has C, E, and G in it. We already have an E. We don't want another E. So I suggest to go by stepwise motion that we take the soprano to C. Um, then our next chord is a G major chord with a D in the bass. Um, so we need a G, B, and a D. Um, so I'm going to go to B. You can go to D. There are many ways to do this, but for this I'm going to go to B. Um, then the next chord is a 5-7 chord, so that means that um, it's a D7 chord. So we need a D, a e, F sharp, an A, and a um, C. Excuse me. Um, so we just, you know, I'm going to continue to step motion down, uh, stepwise motion down. And then we come upon another G chord, which means we need a G, B, and a D. Um, so I'm going to continue going down, um, and then we'll reach a G. 
So next we just start filling in the other voices. So why don't we start with the alto? Um, so the alto um, can stay on a common tone between the two chords. Because again, C major chord needs uh, C, E, and G. Um, we know it's a C major chord because it's a four. So why don't we keep it on G? And then for the tenors, um, we can't uh, move it up to E because that would double the third, and we never want to double the third. So let's move it down to C. Uh, then for our next chord, uh, let's move the tenor to, well, it's considering it's a G chord. Again, it's because it's a 1, 6, 4, that means that it ha it's a G chord, which means that it's G, B, and D. Um, we need to include one of those notes. Now, we don't want to go to B, even though that's stepwise motion, continuing in the motion that we're currently going in, because that would double the third, and again, we never want to double the third in any circumstance. So instead, we're going to go to D and double the fifth, which is what you want to do in the 6-4 chord. Um, so in the alto, we're again going to double the, uh, we're going to keep the common tone, rather, um, because it's part of the chord, and, you know, and the inner voice is not very much moving, it's golden. Um, and so now we're left with the, the uh, next two chords. Um, so the next chord is a 5-7. So um, that means in G major that it needs a D, an F sharp, an A, and a C. So um, why don't we move the alto down to an F sharp, um, because it's stepwise and it's closest. And why don't we move the tenors to a C, again, because that's a chord tone. So for sevenths, they always need to resolve down. Um, so that's one reason why the tenors go to B but also because that's another chord tone in uh, G major chord. Um, then this F can either go to G or it can go to D. I'm going to make it go to G. Either one is correct. Uh, I'm going to make it go to D, excuse me. Uh, either one is correct. So now um, it's always good to check for uh, parallel fifths or octaves. So that's what I'm going to quickly do. Um, so this is a fifth. It's not between the same two voices. Um, this is a fifth. It's um, entered through opposite motion, so it's okay. It's not in the, say, the next two voices. Um, there's no fifth in this chord. There's a fifth. It's entered by oblique motion, which is all right. Um, and then, uh, then the fifth in that chord is not a fifth again, and this chord doesn't lead anywhere from the fifth. However, it does um, come in from just fine. Now uh, let's go to octaves. So there's a G between the alto and the bass. Um, then so, but it's not an octave in the next two voices. So then there's an octave between the tenor and the soprano. Tenor and soprano. Um, they're uh, they come into it by contrary motion, so it's good. Um, there's not an octave in the, in those same two voices. Um, then in this one, there's an octave between these two voices. They come in by contrary motion, so it's good. And then um, it's not in the same two voices. There's no octave in this chord, and then um, in this chord there are octaves, but they're coming by contra motion, and they're not both leaping. So it's all right. So this is all set. So let's hear what we have uh, written down. Cool. All right. On to example two. So in example two, we're going to go a slightly different way. It's, um, instead, we're going to just go with the letter name chords and worry about the Roman numerals later. And we're going to go more chord by chord. Um, so um, this chord, so we're in D minor. Um, we start on D minor chord. Um, then our next chord, we come across in terms of um, inversion symbols is 6-4. Um, but there's a sharp in front of the six. Now, what that means is that a sixth above the base, um, it needs to be sharped. So, first, what we need to remember though is that six four means that the fifth is in the base. So, if the fifth is in the base, um, then E is the fifth. And if E is the fifth, then the fifth below E is the root. So, A is the root. So, it's an A chord. However, there's a sharp six in there. Um, there, so we need to consider what's a sixth above the base. 
So a 6 above an E is a C, and if we sharpen C, then it's a C sharp. It becomes more apparent that now what we're doing is we're creating a major 5 chord, um, but it's an A major chord. So uh, let's keep the tenors on A. Let's move the altos to E. And then let's move the sopranos to C sharp. This is where the sharp 6 comes in. Um, now let's look at the next chord. Um, it says 6, so it's in first inversion. That means that the third is in the bass. Um, so if F is the third, then a generic third below. F is a D, so it's another D minor chord um, because of the key we're in. So that means we just need to create it for a D minor chord. So I'm going to keep the tenors on A. I'm going to move the altos down to D. I'm going to move the sopranos also up to D. Now the reason that the altos went down to D and not back up to F is again because you never want to double the third. However, we need to be careful now because um, the sopranos and altos are at their farthest uh, separation. Um, they can't go farther apart, so they need to come in somehow. Um, so our next chord has seven and then a sharp sound underneath it. Now, you may be wondering if there's no number next to the sharp sign, how do I know what to do with it? Um, it actually turns out to be quite consistent. If you have a sharp or a slash or a dash sign next to no number, um, that's not next to a number, it means that you're doing that to the third of the chord. So if it's um, seven, that means that it's a seventh chord in root position, so A is the root. So again, that sharp means that it's just making it an A major seven because it's including the C sharp. So why don't we give the G to the tenors because that's the seventh. And then we give the E, um, that's the fifth of the chord, to the altos. And we give the C sharp again to the sopranos. Again, that's where the sharp comes in. Um, now we have a symbol that looks relatively new. It's a four dash three. Now in this case, the dash doesn't mean raise it. It means um, that it's, it's a suspension or it's a note that's held over from before. So it means that there's that a fourth above the bass turns into a third above the bass. So right now we need to ask which of these notes creates a fourth of the bass. So a D and a C sharp, well that's a major seventh, so that's not a fourth that can turn into a third. A D and an E, well, that's a major second, so that's not a fourth. A D to a G, that is a, major, that is a fourth, that can turn to a third. So right away, we can hang the tenor voice over from there, and then bring it down to the third afterwards, fourth to third. Um, with these other voices, we uh, just complete a D minor chord, um, because it's a root position. Again, three just means, you know, root position. Four, three just means... It's your position, but there's a fourth of the bass that turns into a three. So I'm going to bring the alto down. I'm going to bring the soprano up. Um, now, we be saying we're not in first inversion anymore. Why not just bring the altos up to F? Now, that's because the um, uh, tenors cover the third eventually. So while we wouldn't be doubling the third at that point, we would be messing with the tenor line later. Um, so. Let's check for uh, parallel fifths and parallel octaves and how they were entered. So this is a fifth. Uh, it's not in between the same voices. Uh, this is a fifth. It's uh, not in between the same voices later, and it's entered by oblique motion. Um, then there's no... Yeah, there's no fifth in this chord. Um, and then... Um, and this chord, there's a fifth right here. It's not in the same voices later, and it's entered by contrary motion. Um, and then here, uh, we don't have a fifth. We have a tripled root, but that's all right due to the circumstances. Um, now let's check it for octaves. Um, here we have an octave. They're not in the same voices. Um, here we have an octave. They're entered by contrary motion, and they're not in the same voices later. Here we have an octave entered by contrary motion and they're not in the same voices later. Here there's no octave, and then here we have a bunch of octaves, but they're all entered uh, appropriately. So this is all set. So let's uh, hear what we have.
So it's not the most interesting melody, but it is correct, so you can put it down. It might not win you any awards, but it will work. Um, so those are our, our examples of figured bass. Oh, I almost forgot. We need to do a harmonic analysis of this passage. So let's go back to text. Um, so the first chord is a D minor chord, and since we're in D minor, um, that means it's a 1. Um, then our second chord is an A major chord. Um, so since A is the fifth scale degree of D minor, that means it's a 5 chord. It's a second version, so it's a 5, 6, 4. Um, then we have another D chord. Um, it's a first inversion, D minor chord, rather. Um, and since we're in D minor, it's another 1, except it's 1, 6. Um, and then we have an A dominant 7, um, or an A major minor 7. Um, so that means, again, it's a 5 chord, as A is the root, and A is the 5th scale degree. And it's a 7, because it has a 7. And then we have another D minor chord, so this is a 1. Uh, so there you have it, that's our harmonic analysis. If you would like, you can put 4, 3 here. Um, it's not necessary, but that is something that can be seen on the test. Alright, have a nice night.